Good morning. morning. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see everyone here this morning. If you're visiting with us, please know we're having a luncheon after the service, and you're welcome to stay, please, and share with us. In our bulletin today, as we know, Christmas in July uh, is wrapping up. Next Sunday will be the last Sunday to bring your boxes. Uh, Lumpkin Camp meeting starts Monday. Uh, Dr. Warren Latham and uh, Reverend Jason Hamby are the uh, pastors. And uh, we are pleased to see everyone here on this day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bittersweet day, but it's still a beautiful day. Please turn off all unnecessary electronics and do remember that um, we are in need of volunteers to uh, record and upload sermons. So if you feel that way, please see the uh, see Cam Reed. We'll, we'll, let, Cam, we'll let Cam do it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's please uh, let's turn our thoughts to worship to worship, please. From Psalm 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Let us pray. Let this day, O Lord, which you have made and given to us, be a day of gladness and joy. We know, Lord, change is bittersweet, and in order to change, we are forced to both leave something behind, and to embrace something new. Grant us this day to do both with humility, for it's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you will, please stand for our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art.
may be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see all of you here. And if this is how I knew to get everybody here, I would have been threatening to leave every week for the last eight years. It's good to see all of you. So during this time, we, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a regular service today. We are, um, we are here to worship God. So I would um, like to lift up our praises and our attributes this morning. And starting with our attributes, we lift up those char characteristics of God that we've seen in this past week. And then we go into lifting up our praises and celebrating those. And then as we go into a time of prayer, we'll lift up those who are heavy on our hearts this morning. So let us start with attributes. What attributes of God did we see this week? God was faithful, faithful. protector, protector. Everything. everything, teacher, teacher. provider, always there. always there, amen. All powerful, all powerful, guiding the way, guiding the way. inspirer. Inspire. That's hard word to say, inspirer. <laughs> uh, how about praises? I know Brad has a praise. He, he uh, retired from his volunteer work at the Mulberry Center, part, and uh, they had a big party for him and, and honored him. So congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Randy? Uh, I had a report from my high school class Thursday, and he said everything looks good. He just liked to be passed on. Just to play it safe, but everything's good. At the right time, that was a great relief for me. That is, that is a praise, and now you're ready to, for the school year to begin. <laughs> Devin. I would like to be in one of them pray for it. Okay, come on up. How can I pray for you this morning? How can I pray for you this morning? Um, that I continue my work to go on. Okay. All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just have your hands upon Devin, that she would always feel your presence and, and your guide, and that she would respond faithfully to you, that she would, would hear your, your voice and your call as you lead her through this life and ministry to others. And it's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you. Any other praises this morning? Mom made it to 75 today. Woohoo! Happy we birthday. Yesterday. Happy birthday, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Oh, Betty. I found out yesterday that I'm going to be a great grandma again. Oh, well, how It's going to be twins. Twin boys. Twin boys. Oh, congratulations. I was hoping that maybe a boy and a girl. It's going to be two boys. Well, congratulations. Good luck. Off. Yeah, we will pray for, for health and good. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's good, too. <laughs> Mary Ellis. I'm grateful for eight years of godly leadership and pastoral care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So am I. So am I. I'm actually really shocked that I'm still here, believe it or not, but I think Sandy is the reason that I'm still doing what I'm doing. She's taught me a lot about um, grace, and hopefully I am more graceful than I am when I walked in the door um, four years ago, but I didn't expect to look forward to these services, you know? And I do. So do we, because of you, so thank you. you give me something every week, every Sunday, to help me get through my week. Thank you. Priscilla. Oh, and we praise God that you're part of our church family. Gail, we praise that you're here. <laughs> Is 
Yes, we are so grateful for modern medicine and, and those who answer God's call to, to fulfill that. So, speaking of which, Preston, <laughs> would you come forward? Preston, we, um, we have journeyed with him through, well, you, long, you a lot longer than I have, um, journeyed through high school and college and the search for a med school, medical school, and, and now you're off tomorrow on your way? Or? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday to yeah, Tampa. Tampa for medical school. So I wanted to be able to ask a blessing upon him and as we send him off for all the great things that God has in store for him. And Brandy and Evan and Aiden, if you want to come up and if Brandy can handle it, <laughs> come on up and, and join him. And then as we did with Violet last week, if, if you feel led, you can extend your hand towards Preston as we pray God's blessing upon him. Rest in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this incredible person in front of us who has dedicated his life not only to you, Lord, but to the service of all of us. So Lord, we ask that you would bless him, that you would give him stamina for all the studying that is to come, that you would guide his path into the, the, the field of, of the, that you want him to specialize in, that when he feels overwhelmed, he knows to stop and to pause and to put all his worries into your hands. That he would feel your presence at all times, especially with moving away from home again. And Lord, that you would give peace to his family, especially to Brandy and Chris, as they will no doubt worry about him as they do Evan and Aiden when they're out of their sight as well. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you that people answer the call and ministry looks different. It doesn't mean just a full-time pastor or somebody in, in church ministry. It's also those who answer the call into medicine to preserve the life that you created. Lord, we give you thanks today. We give you thanks for Preston. We give you thanks for Christ. And it's in Christ's name that we pray, amen. Blessings upon you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this bittersweet moment of, of, of new beginnings. New beginnings for the church, new beginnings for Preston as he goes off to medical school, new beginnings of the next part of my journey in ministry. And Lord, we thank you that you are with us every step of the way. Lord, we thank you for the healing that you've provided, the resources that you've provided, the directions that you have provided. And Lord, as we come together, there are some who, who can't be here with us and those who are on our minds and on our hearts this morning, those who continue to need healing, those who need healing whether that's physically or emotionally or relationally, those who are suffering from loss, and those who just need to know that you see them. So Lord, this morning, we lift up the following to you. We lift up Jean Green. Lord, hear our prayers. We take comfort in knowing that you are aware of each and every one of these situations. And we ask that these individuals that we lifted up feel your presence, whether that's through the Holy Spirit or through each of us as we come and journey with them through this time. And Lord, right now we ask that your Holy Spirit would fill this place, that your word would penetrate our hearts and that our worship would be pleasing unto you. And we ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
And the thing about David is that if you just, in passing, mention, oh, I love that song, he files it away. And there are so many times that he and I'll be in a meeting and we'll be talking about music and he'll be like, oh, that's, that's Walt's favorite song or oh, that's Bonnell's favorite song. He, he knows all your favorite songs and we're just so blessed to, that you, you bring them out to bless us, so thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and, and we ask that we just prepare ourselves to just to be in your presence at this time. And it's in Christ's name that we pray, amen. Well, here we are. A place seven or eight weeks ago wasn't even on my radar. A place that's bittersweet, bitter in the fact that I'm leaving my church family that's been part of my family for the past eight years but exciting to see what God has in store for, for both of our ministries. Bunnell said it best last week. She said, we can't stand in the way of God's calling. So this morning I'd like to take a few moments and reflect on the last eight years together. See, it's already starting. <laughs> and it's, it's my love letter to all of you. So I wanna get through the hardest part first because I've decided just to get the tears over with in the first part. And if I, if I don't cry, it's because I've cried them out already going through it this morning and, and during the week. But So all of you, as a church, have pastored me and my family as much as I have been a pastor to you. You have carried us through grief, recovery, diagnoses, unemployment, and deployment. And you've celebrated with us. A graduation from Emory course of study, a new grandson, Sawyer. Sawyer, raise your hand. <laughs> you've celebrated the safe return of Christian from Afghanistan, a new job for Dan, Christian and Ashley's wedding. We even lifted up Aiden's driver's permit a couple weeks ago. And we've also celebrated, probably most importantly, my budding green thumb. If you recall, one of my first sermons here was about my black thumb, and I even brought in a dead plant to prove it to you. But ever since that message, my plants are thriving and I even had to do a message a couple years ago to retract that original statement and share the pictures of my beautiful flowers with you. I am not doing anything different other than God just blessing my plants through that first sermon. You have loved on my family, including my out-of-town family, my sister and brother-in-law, when they visit to the point where they're going to miss you just as much as I will. And for this, I thank you with more than words can ever convey. I was so excited to start here at Oakwood, all for the same reasons that Pastor Emmy is excited to join you in a couple weeks. First of all, you had more than 10 people. <laughs> Our, the first two churches we had, one had five people, and the other had 10 to 12 people. So we were excited to, to come here be, just for that fact alone. And you had a church secretary. Dan and I didn't have to print bulletins and fold them in front of the TV on Saturday nights anymore. You had vibrant Sunday school classes. You had a choir and a piano player. And you had a huge heart for missions with supporting the international missions through the missions auctions and through the yard sale. And you already had a relationship with Good News at Noon. And I was so blessed to be appointed here. I was overwhelmed and not sure of, of all that I was doing when I arrived, but God worked through us and we were faithful to respond. Through these last eight years, God enabled us to develop a relationship with Oakwood Elementary 
to the point where they call us when they have a need to help a family. God enabled us to be introduced to new ministries that we were able to partner with, whether for a one-time need or for a long-term relationships. Ministries like One Way, Family Promise, Set Free, Well Root, Spectrum, Tijuana, Perspectives, Operation Christmas Child, just to mention a few. I pray that God will continue to send you new opportunities to, to meet new people and continue making a difference by being the hands and feet of Jesus. Over the last eight years, God has allowed us to create a new parking lot to bring technology into the sanctuary, to open up the pulpit a bit so we can see the smiling faces of our choir. We built a website. We've been able to offer worship online. And when we weren't able to worship in person because of COVID, we were able to del deliver worship bags during Lent and Advent to help us make it feel a little more interactive. And we also moved to a one board model for church council, streamlining our effectiveness in regards to the business of the church so that we can focus more on the ministries of the church. There is so much that God has accomplished through all of you. You all are making a difference here, there, and everywhere. As I've been reflecting on all that we have been through together on this journey, there are a few things that have been very memorable. First is our, our missions auction. And the generosity that is displayed at these events is outstanding. I mean, bidding is no joke. Dan and I had to learn to stand down when there was somebody who wanted something and just stand down and let them have it. The talent that is in our church, which is representative in the items donated to bid on, is so impressive. And even hidden talents, like Gail, not even knowing she could draw, or maybe she knew it, but she shared it with us these last few auctions, has been so impressive. And the contributions that we are able to make to the missionaries that we support around the world is a blessing. Not only a blessing to us, but blessing to those that receive it. Our Christmas ornament exchange party is also memorable. It is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Whenever there's a new member attending, I remember doing this with Priscilla, we had to take them aside and ask for their forgiveness ahead of time. The South Hall Community Food Pantry is memorable, not only in the fact of how many people they serve in the community, but also that they were gracious enough to listen to a proposal of starting a back to school event and agreed to try it, where all the partnering churches would come together to create a fun gathering that included free food, games, free school supplies, free haircuts, music, and fellowship. It gets better every year, and each year we learn how to serve our community better. Your efforts are making a difference. Another memorable moment for me during these last eight years was the year that we held our first trunk or treat with McEver Road and First Baptist. I think it was 2018. The city shut down Railroad Street for us, Memorial Park Funeral Home, grilled hot dogs for us, the Hall County Fire Department brought out their trucks, Lanier Event Planning loaned us decorations, and we had about 400 people milling about down there. And my cheeks hurt from smiling. I walked around all night in disbelief at what was taking place. It was such a blessing to see the community come together and to provide a safe place for the kids to have fun and to have joy. Bob Quist, our, our, church, our old church neighbor, is another addition to my memorable time here. Bob is a sweet spirit, 
He loved his animals, and he would go without food so they wouldn't have to. And we would have many theological conversations in the parking lot regarding the difference between Methodists and Baptists. And you were able to bless Bob with a car, which he said was life-giving. It meant so much to him. Bob had a lot of challenges, but he never gave up praising God each and every day. And he told me that he considered me to be his pastor, even though he didn't go to church here. And of course, I have a piece of Bob with me in the form of a cat named Alice. <laughs> I haven't heard from Bob in a while, but the last time I did hear from him, he was doing well living near his family down in Valdosta. Another memorable moment is God's miracle of bringing Dolores Richardson to our church. For those of you who don't know, Dolores was the wife of my childhood pastor in Illinois. And somehow God saw to it that we would end up in the same church in another state 35 years later. That she would become a member, that I would become her pastor, and that soon afterwards I would have the honor to officiate her funeral. If you want to hear the full story, I'm sure John Patrick would be happy to share it with you. Another memory that pops up for me is the first yard sale that I was here for. Donna will remember this. There was a couple that came to our yard sale and was quizzing me about where the disciples sat at the Last Supper. And, you know, I was telling her, you know, who I thought was to the right of Jesus, left of Jesus. And they're like, no, no, no. And they were telling me that uh, what it was was based on Da Vinci's Last Supper. And to them, that was gospel. Like, and they're like, every pastor needs to know where they're sitting, because that's how it was. I'm like, yes, because Da Vinci was there. <laughs> and, he paint, and he painted that portrait live. Um. <laughs> and then there was this. Now, I only, I submitted some pictures for the, the slideshow that we saw during the, the special. But this one is my favorite. It's a Ron Petrie. Now Ron was the first person that I met here at Oakwood. He was the SPR chair and we met at Crossroads Restaurant for the first time and we hit it off right away. And I couldn't resist taking this picture of him as he took a break at the yard sale. And I sent it to his wife, who's also named Sandy, to let her know how hard he was working. But then I had the picture blown up, and I submitted it to our missions auction. And guess who was the highest bidder? Ron. <laughs> he paid $200 for a picture of him sitting on a potty chair, because he didn't want anybody else to have it. <laughs> Speaking of Ron, one of the most memorable moments I've ha had while serving here at Oakwood has been officiating the funerals for our beloved members. It's a difficult time, it's a sad time, but I am never as blessed as I am to honor the life who loves God, who loves their church, and who loves their family, and I'm humbled each and every time. When I think about the fact that eight years could not have possibly passed already, all I have to do is look at Preston and Evan and Aiden and Violet. At the time I started, Preston I think was the only one in high school, maybe just in high school. Aiden Aiden and Evan were in middle school, maybe even in elementary school, and, and Violet was wee little. But now, Preston's off to medical school, Aiden and Evan are in college, and Violet is discerning a life dedicated to full-time ministry. May God bless the path that he has you guys on. Also, over the past eight years, 
It has, and it has certainly nothing to do with me and everything to do with them, is how our choir has blossomed. Your hard work, your dedication, your love for God shines through each and every week. So thank you for leading us in worship every Sunday. Need tissue. In addition to the choir and everyone else who enables us to provide meaningful worship services every Sunday, because it takes an army. I think almost just as many members we have, that's how many people are working on a Sunday to provide a, a wonderful worship experience. But I am blessed to, and supported by a great staff. Cindy and David are blessings to this church. They are willing to try anything and they give their best. So thank you for all that you've done and do. Each and every one of you are the heartbeat of this church. All of you who volunteer, all of you who maintain the church, all of you who donate towards ministries, and all of you who do things that no one even knows that you do, thank you. You all make a difference in the kingdom of God. There's a story about a boy on the beach throwing starfish back in the ocean, and I've shared it with you before, and I'm sure you've heard it elsewhere as well, but I'd like to read it to you this morning. <clears throat> it goes, once upon a time, there was a man walking on the beach. As, as he looked down the beach, he thought he saw a dancer. But as he got closer, he noticed it was a young man reaching down to the shore, picking up small objects and throwing them into the ocean. He came closer still and called out, Good morning, may I ask what it is that you're doing? The young man paused, looked up and replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. Why are you throwing starfish into the ocean? Asked the somewhat startled man. To this, the young man replied, the sun is up and the tide is going out. And if I don't throw them in, they'll die. Upon hearing this, the man commented, but young man, do you not realize that there are miles and miles of beach and there are starfish all along every mile? You can't possibly make a difference. At this, the young man bent down, picked up yet another starfish, threw it in the ocean, and as it met the water, he said, it made a difference for that one. It is easy as a small church to think that you're limited on reaching people for Christ. Not enough volunteers, not enough money, not enough energy, but you are making a difference. You might not be able to share the love of Christ with as many people as you would like, but to those that you are able to minister to, you are making a difference. So to help you remember that, I have one of these starfish story cards for each one of you, and it comes with a little starfish charm that you can put on a necklace or, or your keychain to help remind you, if you start to doubt, that you do make a difference to someone. And for our regular members, your cards are individually addressed to you, but I anticipated all of those who are visiting with us today, and I have, I have cards for you too as well, so please be sure pick yours up before you leave today. I can't go on without first or lastly or thanking Dan and my family for always supporting me and encouraging me. Ministry is hard. There's been many times where I wanted to quit. And they were always there to listen, to love, to support, and to encourage. I wasn't a pastor when Dan and I got married. He didn't sign up for this. He's been thrust into it. He's become the pastor's spouse. The only thing I won't let him do is go on the clergy wife's retreat, because... <laughs> <laughs> But even though he was thrust into this position, 
He has done so with so much grace. And yes, I know, all of you want him to stay. <laughs> we want you both. <laughs> the biggest privilege and honor that I have had as your pastor is praying for you. For you to trust me with your stresses, your worries, and your needs. And I will continue to pray for you. I told Cindy Edwards the other day that I will continue to pray for you when I wake up at night and can't sleep because Gainesville is way too big to go pew by pew to pray for them. I'd be up all night. So I will be praying for you. But seriously, it's been an honor to pray for you these past eight years, and I will have the honor of continuing to do so. So with that, allow me to close with a prayer that Paul prayed for the Colossians. And if I may, I would like to take the liberties to make some changes so that it is addressed personally to you. Paul's original prayer is listed in your bulletin. And in my Bible, the heading over this passage is entitled, Paul thanks God for the Colossians. So here's my version entitled, Sandy thanks God for the people of Oakwood First UMC. In my prayers for you, I always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For I have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing the fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day that you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. For this reason, since the day I have heard it, I have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In the name of Christ, amen. Yes, we're singing okay. it. <laughs>
Sandy and Dan will join me, please. You can sit down. <laughs> yes, you can sit down. Sandy and Dan, as we say goodbye today, we thank you for all the memories of the past eight years have given us. We pray as you make this change in your lives that the Holy Spirit will go with you. We ask the Holy Spirit for an easy transition, for your comfort, for your strength, and know you both are always kept in the power and love of our compassionate Father in heaven. God bless and keep you. Please accept this token of our appreciation of your love and thanks. Thank God bless now and always. Thank you. We love you. Love you guys too. Please don't cry. Okay. Don't. <laughs> he said, please don't cry. Please don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, well, I've said it all already. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? Nope. Okay. <laughs> In fact, um, I met with Pastor Emmy on Friday to go over things, and I told her that, you know, she, there, she might see Dan from time to time, and, and her husband is um, do, doing something similar in, in their home church, too. And she said, that's okay, I can have a church husband and a home husband. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I'll share him if, if, he, if he wants to. That, that's, that's for him to discern God's calling on, on that. But... Um, Thank you for all that you've done for us here too. So this has been a looking back, but moving forward. Yes. Today. Yes. So thank you for it. Yes. So let's stand and I will um if if this is all right with the powers that be, I will bless the the, the meal ahead and um Dan and I will will go out and um be with those. Do you need to go back and man the camera? Okay. <laughs> well um We'll, we'll go out and, and greet those who can't stay for us for lunch, but as, they, as Bynell mentioned, you're all welcome to stay. And um, we look forward to just fellowshipping some more today. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be blessed, and we ask God's blessing upon the meal that is before us in the hands that prepared us. Prepared it. Amen. Amen. Okay.